Should you be paying off your mortgage early here in the UK? I've covered this topic before on the channel, but I covered it in the context of should you invest or pay off your mortgage? Things have moved on quite significantly since I made that video back then. You're welcome to go watch it if you want to. I will link it uh, right above here. However, we're in a different environment. We've got the cost of living crisis, which is sparring and out of control. We've just heard news that the energy price cap is going to increase by 80% on October the 1st, which is going to push our inflation number up even higher. And so you may be looking at your assets right now with maybe a lump sum or some disposable income available, thinking, well, if I put money into a savings account, I'm not really going to go into earn much. Is it worthwhile paying off my mortgage and reducing my term, saving yourself interest on your mortgage? Those are the numbers that I want to get into in this video. But before we get into the numbers, some context, because context is really important. Inflation in the UK at last measurement was 10.1%. And the Bank of England has basically predicted that inflation is going to be at 13% by the end of the year. That's still double digits. That's still pretty high. However, I've been saying since that announcement that I think that the Bank of England and the Monetary Policy Committee are underestimating the impact of the energy price cap increasing in that inflation number. When you look at inflation, it's all about the increasing costs of goods and services around us. And where we're seeing the biggest amount of inflation at the moment or increase in cost is in our energy supply and our fuel supply, particularly energy. And so with the price cap increasing by 80% and then reviews happening every three months, I think that they've undercooked this massively. Now, Citibank tend to agree with me. This is a forecast that they published a couple of days ago. They are forecasting that the UK inflation number is actually going to be 18.6% in January. Now, regardless of whether it ends up being 13% or 18.6%, there is one thing that I can almost guarantee is going to happen. And that is going to be increases to the Bank of England base rate. We've seen six or seven of them so far this year. And the impact there has been that we've seen mortgage rates go from near on one and a half percent, doubling to over three percent. And what that basically means is that if you do have a mortgage and you're a standard verbal rate or you're a tracker, you would have seen your cost increase. I know there are a number of people who watch this channel who have seen their costs increase. So fixing seems like the right thing to do. Now, the positive side of having a rate increase by the Bank of England is that in savings, you should now get a better rate with a savings account. However, the juxtaposition here is it doesn't matter what you're getting in your savings account as a rate of return. If it doesn't match the 13% the Bank of England are forecasting or God forbid 18.6% that Citibank think it's going to be, you are effectively losing money in real time. And this is the conundrum. How much money would you need to save to make enough interest to equate to the amount that you could save if you overpaid on your mortgage? That's how we're going to get into the numbers. And I'm going to link this calculator below because this calculator with something that you can use is going to be pivotal in helping us draw the picture of what this might look like. So this is the Halifax Mortgage Overpayment Calculator. And all you need to do is basically put in your mortgage details. So let's just say you've got £120,000 left and you've got a 20-year term. And let's just assume that you're on a 2% rate at this point in time, okay? So that tells you that your current payments are going to be £607 per month. Now, let's assume you want to make regular overpayments of £100 per month. So that's going to take your payment up to £707 per month. What this is telling you is that paying an extra £100 per month for the remaining term could mean that you'd save £4,523 in interest. So again, what most people are thinking about here, and this is the question to ask, so this is really the calculation that needs to be made, is how much do you need to save in a savings account and at what rate to be able to make £4,523? is going to be a large sum of money. So this 
this leads to the wise and intelligent allocation of cash particularly if you've got disposable income or if you've got a lump sum so this is just assuming you're making overpayments 100 pounds per month from disposable income you could potentially save 4523 pounds in interest over the course of the term of your mortgage assuming importantly assuming that your rate remains the same now that's a big caveat because your rate probably won't remain the same because you will shop around later on in the future for a better deal but let's just say you know you did shop around and rates have gone up like i expect them to well making other payments is going to save you even more so let me just put this rate up here to three percent you see that the amount that you can save actually jumps to seven thousand two hundred and twenty four pounds in interest so the higher your interest rates your overpayments are going to save you more in interest over the long term but again with the caveat that assuming that the interest rate that you're paying on your mortgage remains the same at the time of us doing this calculation or you doing this calculation i'm going to put this back to two now let's just say you have a lump sum available right so let's just say you've got ten thousand pounds lying around what do the numbers actually tell you so this tells you that you'll save eight thousand two hundred and thirty two pounds in interest over the course again assuming that it's it stays at two percent now, those numbers are very, very interesting. And again, the question is, well, how much you've got to save to earn £8,232 in interest? How much do you have to invest to actually get that return as well? And again, investing is a completely different beast. We'll talk about that towards the end of this video. But what I'm more interested in is the impact that this would have on the term of your mortgage. So remember, we put on there that your remaining term is going to be 20 years. If you did a lump sum, of £10,000 with an overpayment of £100 per month, this will, this will literally shave off five years off your mortgage, which means that you'll be mortgage free earlier. And for a lot of people, that is a big deal. This allows you choices five years earlier than planned for really, and can have a really big impact on the choices that you make in the future. Now, if you don't have £10,000 lying around as a lump sum, let me just take that out. What impact does £100 per month actually have? Well, actually, it shortens it by three years. So this can have a really, really big impact. And I would encourage you to play around with this. Um, put your own numbers in. Do a bit of a variation of combination of things that you might want to do. In, I mean, the bigger your monthly over repayments, if it's £200, obviously, the more you're going to be saving in interest. And obviously, the more it's going to shave off your term. So just by increasing this from, you know, 100 to 200 pounds, the interest saved will be 7,682. But you know, you shaved off three years before, you're now down to 15 years. So it's, it's quite powerful. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Now, Oftentimes when people make overpayments on their mortgage, um, especially, and this is pertinent if you're making a lump sum payment to your mortgage, you want to make sure that the lump sum and the overpayment that you're making is going towards your capital and not your interest. The banks can be a little, I won't use the, the word, um, but they can be naughty with this and just allocate the money so it pays off part of your capital and part of your interest. You don't want that. You want it to go off your capital. Doing that is going to make the biggest difference to you. Now, I did have the guys at Sprife on my podcast maybe two or three months ago. I'll leave a link to them down below. It is an affiliate link. I don't earn anything from it, but it is a very useful app to play around on because it helps you visualize a map, kind of like the visual here with Halifax, what your mortgage journey might be by making overpayments and structuring it in a number of different ways. So that's one thing that I do want to, you know, definitely point out. You know, make sure that if you are making overpayments, making sure that it's coming off your capital and not a spread of your capital and your interest. You're almost defeating the point if you do it that way. The other thing that is worthwhile talking about is investing. Now, obviously investing is a big topic here on the channel, and the last time I spoke about this, I said, look, you've got to make the right decision for you. The reality is that with everything that's going on right now, this is a global issue, inflation, interest rates, monetary policy tightening across the world. There are issues in every corner. If you're going to invest, yes, recessions can be an opportunity. But the question is, do you understand risk? Are you happy to take that risk? 
for a lot of people that I speak to, it is all about what helps them sleep best at night. And that's how I ended the last video and how I'm going to end this video. You know, you've got to try and make sure that you make the decision that helps you sleep best at night. And if for you visualizing the possibility of paying off your mortgage five years earlier, three years earlier, or even, you know, 10 years earlier is what gives you peace of mind. And it gets you excited about the prospect of being able to make real healthy financial decisions then that's what you should do. If you're like me, where you're kind of like, actually, you want to take advantage of the market, so you want to invest, then that is the right thing for you to do. But I hope by illustrating this in this video and using this, this calculator, you're able to kind of come to some kind of informed decision around what you might want to do, given where we are. And the context of where we are is really important. We are going to see interest rates increase with inflation increasing and surging as it is. So things are going to get more expensive. Yes, savings rates are going to increase, but really any money that you put in a savings account with inflation being as rampant, you're going to be losing money in real time. So the question is, the money that you have right now, is it worthwhile using it to secure the roof over your head and secure your future, pay down your mortgage a little bit earlier, save yourself an interest? Or is it worthwhile sitting in a savings account or possibly invested into the market with the investment risk that you carry? I can't answer that question. That is for you to answer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and smash that like button. I'll catch you later on.